Hi. Hi. <laughs> I want to I share an anecdote with you, but I realize it, it is so tied to its context that I have to set the scene. I have, to, I have to create the moment in which it happened for you to understand it, because otherwise it won't make any sense. And then I realized I was in a room full of incredible theatrical people, and I thought you might help me recreate it. Would you be willing to do that with me? Yes. Awesome. Well, then I'm going to just completely shatter the fourth wall and come down there with you people. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Come on down. <laughs> okay. Ah, no, 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 no. It'll take forever if we do that. Okay. A lot of the work the Circus Freaks, who are the producers of this mental illness that we call Monday Night, uh, do are, are with, are, are, and I've said this before, with troubled kids, after school programs, shelters, homes, things where people are genuinely hurting. So what I need you to do in a very positive way is imagine this room just so much smaller, a sliver of, of the room that you're currently in. This is a big room. Imagine a small one. It's well lit. Um, it's a multi-purpose activity room, so it's used for everything. There's, um, let me try to remember, there's a printer over here, no computer plugged into it, but there's a printer here. There's a map of the United States behind me and clocks on the wall, but different times from around the world. And, and there's shelves over here with art supplies and there's chairs that we've taken all the tables and we, we stuck them in the, in the back room. We stuck them in the back room and I got a real sense of exactly how many resources this particular facility had. And while I was excited to be there, when they offered me a bottle of water, I said, no thank you, knowing I shouldn't be taking, I should be giving. So it's a small room and I'm, I'm prepared and I'm, I'm, I'm getting warmed up and the kids come in. We've got two rows of chairs and tables are gone, nice amount of space, about this much stage, maybe shorter, but we, we've got it. And I walk in and the first kid is right about here. The first kid's here and he's wearing one of these, uh, the UK flag and it says, keep calm, carry on. So I call him Winston Churchill. <laughs> and I just for the rest of the, Winston Churchill. Just no matter what happens, he's Winston Churchill. I later found out he wasn't playing video games on his phone. He was actually on Wikipedia trying to figure out who the hell Winston Churchill was. <laughs> so, you know, one for education. Hey. All right. Now, the scene. So the kids stumble in one by one. They're coming from different activities. They've been told nothing more than it would be a circus day. There'd be circus performers. So they're very excited and they're agitated and they're, they're ready for it to happen. And we take our dang sweet time getting to it. Now, I have... Um, I have a, a performing partner with me uh, who, is, who is not here this evening. I, can I get a volunteer to be my performing partner? Don't all jump, leap at once. There we go. That's perfect, perfect, perfect. If you'd stand right here um, and, and if you could uh, start thinking pretty thoughts. How many people know Calamity the Clown? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Calamity the Clown stunt double. Per yeah, perfect. Okay. Now, now pop your hip a little. Perfect. Okay. That's so, me, and this is Russ. This is Russ. Yeah, we'll be here all night. <laughs> Here's what you need to know about your job now. In a few minutes, there's going to be kids involved in an interactive activity. And your whole job is to make them win. Without making it seem that you made them win. Without taking the energy away from them. While still being this ridiculous clown character that you are. You have to do all of this, hold all of this in your head. I know, and being you, it's hard. But, but there's one other thing you need. An enchanted bucket! And you see, that's what I said. When I said enchanted bucket, I said... But there's, there's one kid in the back. There's, she's a little girl, and she says, it's not magic. And I say, okay. I said, that's fine, that's fine. Here, here you go. And, uh, I say, but this is, it's a magic scarf, I say. And she says, no, it's not. It's not magic. It's, it's just a scarf. And I said, well, it, it's thaumaturgically enhanced, <laughs> but otherwise normal. She says, no, not even knowing what that means, I'm sure. Uh, and I said, is it red? Yeah. Yeah. It's a red scarf. Otherwise, we're not getting anywhere. I then explained that I have invented a game. I invented a game over breakfast, which is great. I invented it. Thank you. You're getting the gist of this so quickly. That, that was to you. You've, you've drawn away from the room. So close. Excellent segue. These are called puffers. Because I didn't come up with a better name for them. You know, I thought I would come up with a better name. Yeah. 
I thought I would come up with a better name with them. And I did. That was two for two. I'm two for two. Okay, okay. I'm two for two because of the lights. <laughs> well, fine. Fortunately, my job is to be a clown and not a juggler, so I'm perfectly safe. <laughs> but I say the puffers have a small amount of ability to puff. Not a lot, but each one of them is maybe a third of the energy necessary to loft yonder magical scarf into the air. I say, Kids, who wants to try this? Now, before you respond, because I know you're ready to become that audience participation group, realize these children are about to stand up in front of their peers. They are about to stand up in front of their peers and, and do something stupid. <laughs> they are about to stand up in front of their peers, do something stupid, and laugh their heads off doing it the hands all went up at once. If you have never been on stage, this would be a great opportunity to be the volunteer because you'll know exactly how they felt. Can I get three volunteers, please? That's one. Don't hesitate, move quickly. There they are. Three volunteers, give them a hand! Now, if you please stand on my, my left, my left, my left, and without starting, without starting a fight, I know one of them's different, but please choose your puffers. Each <laughs> Don't fight. Be nice. Everybody got puffer? Everybody got test? Okay, good, good. Test. Now, the rules are simple. The rules are simple. Calamity. You have to focus. Stunt double calamity is trying her best. The bucket gets held out. The kids at this point immediately know what their job is. I think you figured it out. Yes, yes, yes. Puff, land. You guys have figured out the game, okay? <laughs> magic scarf, red, sorry, red, my bad. Yeah, I know, it's not magic. Red scarf, and, and you guys get the idea. You'll have to work as a team, I explained, <laughs> because the puffers individually don't have the mojo necessary to give it the go-go it needs. And I ask everybody else, since they're not currently up here, but though later they will get a chance to do it, I say, if you would give me a, a, a three count, we'll go one, two, three, I'll throw it in the air, and, and they'll get the idea, and then we'll get to work, and this will be awesome. Yeah? Okay? Yeah. 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 Okay, ready? One, two, three. And that's how the game works. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You can keep the nose. You may be seated. And I, and I explain that this game is magic, and I explain that this game is wonderful. And over here is, is this kid. Now, every program has one of these. Every program I've been to has these kids enter these programs. They're there for a certain number of years, and then they're the last kid in the program. They're the oldest kid in the program. They're, they should be, you know, they've been hanging out with people half their age most of the time they've been there. They should be really surly. <laughs> and if they're not, I'm always really impressed. So I say, and that, that game wouldn't have been possible without a magic scarf. It's not a red, red scarf. And from over here, I hear a voice. I hear a voice from the oldest kid in the room who looks at me, who is too cool for any of us. He goes, it's magic. <laughs> That's absolutely magic. And bumps his younger buddy. He goes, totally magic. How else would that have worked? Down the row. There are, there are two things I can tell you about this. And the first is, any program that can have someone come in not believing in it and go out back into the world believing in it is an amazing program. I might tip my hat to all of you. Please. And, and stupid games were we introduced the idea of magic. Not a, I don't know. If you believe in magic, that's great. If you don't believe in magic, it's not important. What, what is important is the idea that I exaggerate. You know, the bucket is not enchanted. We know this. The, um, the, the puffers are, are, are stupid and easy to break. <laughs> Very hard to juggle when the lights are in your eyes. And, and the scarf, well, it's red. But the first step in any kind of creativity, in any kind of imagination, it's a little exaggeration. The kid who walks in the program seeing reality just as it is because they become cynical manages to come out the other side, believing maybe in the possibility of magic. I think that's a good day for anyone. And it's what I see here every week, and it's where I learn it, and it's why I teach it. Thank you, and welcome to the open stage.